I think about what are the things that would work for me? Because if it wouldn't work for me, it's a clue that I should do it differently. Each person has to find their own integrity of what feels aligned and how you want to continue to grow your business or how you want to market. And for me, I like marketing in the ways that I would enjoy receiving on the other side. Every time we start these things, I almost want an intro song like, like in Monday real Night time? Football. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. That's exactly here right. With Matt. That's that's I, everyone else. You're here and you've already listened to like some intro track. But for us, it's just like conversation and hit the record. And here we go. Uh, no, but for sure. I, we've got a good topic today. So this is going to be a good show. The topic is AI voice. So this has been a, a, a trend over the last year. And I want to break this into categories. So for some folks, like this is still new. This still feels like uh, uncharted waters. And you're like, what are they referring to? What are they getting into? And for other folks, you're like, I've ha- I have experience with it. I love it. Or I have experience with it. And it's underwhelmed me. And so I am feeling the tension to almost take a stance. And maybe you're, you're hearing this for the first time of like taking a stance. And, and, and I'll, I'll give you some backstory into it. So for folks that are new, there last year, we've gone from additional more mod- modalities where you can leverage AI. Like AI, no one's surprised, like, oh, well, Facebook's had an AI algorithm like running the code or making decisions behind the scenes. You're like, oh, that's been around. ChatGPT made it uh, a conversational AI that you could you could interact with via text. That was the first first form. Text, you could do that. They expanded to other forms of written communication. They would do code, stuff like that. And then quickly, even around the same time, they had images, which you've seen. And then it was like, well, if I have images, why can't I do video? People like, you totally can. Uh, you have pioneers. Uh, I, I think Eleven Labs is still like the the king of voice in terms of real, like replicating realistic human voice, and that could be for any purposes, right? That could be inside of the video. Uh, there's actually like a, a super popular company that does like AI video called HeyGen. And it's powered by Eleven Labs. So it's like, hey, Jen does the, I mean, for all we know, it's all powered by OpenAI and Eleven Labs. I don't know what their whole mechanism is there, but they're, you know, they've got their own proprietary stuff because they're scanning you. They're creating, you know, what are videos? They're images sequenced together in in certain frames. And so they take you, they simulate you, and then they replicate uh, like AI call it like avatars, like spoken things, but it's videos, how you consume it, right? Or you're, or you're listening to it. That's like Eleven Labs people use it for reading audiobooks. And so to clarify, that's the world we're in. Is, is any way that you can communicate, AI is now being p- pushing the boundaries of doing that kind of communication. There is a growing trend, and, and this is weird. It's hard to take a hard stance and not feel like you're knocking someone. So I'm not, I'm not trying to knock somebody personally, but there is a very popular um, AI voice. The idea of like, by voice, I mean phone. The idea is like phone agents calling out. And so one of our brands does a ton of AI messaging. And to clarify, I feel like I have the need to tell us, look it up on YouTube. We launched this in 2020. So we, we were not like riding the trend. We launched it and it was Google products because Google was the leader at the, AI at the time yep. there. And we were doing conversational AI appointment booking in 2020. Um, it obviously has gotten way more popular in the last year and with the emergence of better access to AI, it made it a lot easier for folks to kind of like get close replicas of what we've been doing for years. Um, right. But it's awesome. And it's also advanced what we've been able to do with it. Uh, but so in that space, we focus on messaging. Any, any, any text-based platform, that was also just the technology. It was harder to do AI voice, although Google simulated, they just haven't commercialized AI voice for, for years. So people played around with it, but there wasn't enough demand. It wasn't happening there. But so the question we commonly get is, Matt, are you guys going to b- come out with AI voice versions? We've got Zappy Chat that does a ton of stuff in the conversational, but written forms, email, text, Facebook, DMs, all that sort of stuff, but no voice, no AI cold calling. <laughs> and uh, at first we're like, okay, if people want this, I guess we should prioritize it. I guess we should innovate. We should add this to it. And um, it's, it's a weird it's a weird tension where you've got folks that are allowed that want this because it exists in other places. Maybe this is the first place I'll say it. I am not bullish on phone as a mode for communication. If you ask Just me, in general. In general. Okay. I, I actually use the phrase, people have maybe heard me say this, and it's like a silly that phone is becoming the modern day fax. Oh, so it is. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. we got at least one person who's like, yes, I agree. So <laughs> I'm a strong agree. If, if phone is becoming the modern day fax, 
Um, why would I want to invent a better fax machine? That feels like the yeah. wrong way to go. That feels like the wrong allocation of resources for me. And mm-hmm. as I'm saying this, if, if, if you're not in the world, then it doesn't feel that weird. For me, if this feels awkward to say, honestly, because there are so many folks that are excited about this. And here I am, and I feel like I'm raining on people's parade to be like, why? Why? I, I'm not against AI voice, but like via video, for sure. Via phone calls, that is the wrong space to go. And so, so there's That's my there's my opinion about it. But I want to like uncover and like yeah. pull this back. There are situations where I could make a case and say like, you know what, this is a good use case for you in this subset. So, for example, if your avatar, if you're like Matt, I'm making money, I'm serving the boomers. I'm like, Mm -hmm. great, then yes, it makes sense. You could justify making a better fax machine. And maybe someone's going to say, well, Matt, you're undervaluing like, you know, for the next 20 years, we're still going to be having advanced fax machines. So I may as well have an advanced fax machine rather than not. And it's not going to fall off as fast as you think, Matt. But I'm once again, I firm, I actually believe it will. I, I believe as a channel phone is becoming the modern day fax and not like, it's just as a conversational choice. I right now have it. My phone is always D and D, always. Yep. Apple and others Same. make this super easy. Tyler, so yep. two for two. Hundred percent of our. Uh, I'd love to know as an as a listener, as an, as an audience, do you have your phone on D and D always? Um, if that's my experience, I understand. I might be on the leading edge of how I use that and engage myself, but my phone is on D and D always. I don't care if you try to call me a hundred times with an AI robot, I will never answer, never. And if I had to bet over the next five years, 10 years, 15 years, I think more people are going to be like me. I do not think there's going to be a reversal where we're like, oh my gosh, someone's calling me, let me answer. And if, if that's what's going to happen, just like fax machine, it is in effect, I have a, it's like I've thrown the fax machine out of the house. If my phone's on D and D, does it matter? that you can try to call me. That's like, I disconnected my fax machine from the fax line. Does it matter that you can technically try and send me a fax? No, in effect, pretend that's no longer a channel communication for me. It's it's a blurred line because you've got text messaging via the same number that I do use. And so here's, um, yeah, so there, there's my negative part of the rant. I want to talk through yeah. some positives or where I could see sure. people justify. So one, if you're in that segment where you're, you are going after older folks, that do answer their phones still, there's still money to be made. I'm not saying people aren't making money leveraging AI for for outbound calls right now or for phone as a channel. There is money there. I just, I don't know how long that money's going to be there. Um, The other thing is, this is an interesting relationship. Phone is the only thing. um, Well, it's not the only thing. here's, Here's the hard part. Text messages, which I think way more common messaging, There is no way to send a text message without an opt-in. doesn't matter who it's to. So in other channels, email or even phone, if it's B2B, you can do it no matter what. Like you don't need an opt-in to call a business. Super interesting. You don't need an opt-in to call a business. You do need an opt-in to text a business which is this weird zone that we're in where it's almost like overcorrected. So that's the other space where I do see folks if you know, there's the older population, there's also B2B. So I, I have to give credit. And this is just, it, it's just a function of the legal uh, regulatory environment that we're in that AI for outbound calling is still effective because it's less regulated. Now, yeah. maybe that, maybe that adjusts and they, you know, introduce more regulation or enforcement of regulation that, that yeah. kind of makes it less effective because the, the uh, another consideration here is technically there's um I think it was a, a a Biden I don't know if it's a law or a directive to the FTC that if you are communicating via AI you have to lead and disclose that it is AI. So technically, my understanding is if you're a strict follower of every mandate and maybe law, you would have to start off and be like, this is an AI, you know conversationalist and then an inter- and then continue with the conversation which would obviously diminish the effectiveness of that process to date i don't think anybody's been fined for it but it's like all things it's all like i am sure 
if that's the regulation, we're waiting months, maybe years for a big news thing where the FTC slaps a $60 million fine on some business that was like, they were doing this kind of thing. They were doing B2B because the phone call, totally fine. It, it might be the like, did you disclose that it was AI that was making the, the conversation there? And so it's just really intriguing, this whole space. So that's, that's like, if I was going to like, just there's my concession is that there are people making money with it right oh, yeah. now. There's, there's still ground to be had in those two categories because it, you could argue, Matt, I can't text all these businesses, but I can call them legally. Or Matt, my audience does answer the phone. And I say kudos to you. But as far as people asking me, Matt, do you want to invest, dive deep, spend your time, energy, innovation space on voice as in phone calls? I can't do it right now. I think one thing that's really interesting is that the people, like you're saying, okay, if you're serving boomers or people who answer the phone still, they're also the people who are the most skeptical and cynical about AI. So it's like, do you want to reach them in the way they least like to be communicated? And so I, I'm not, I agree with you. There might be people it works for, but I agree that it's, it's a bullish call to put energy there when there are other things that are probably better. Yeah. And so it, it, this is, this is the interesting space that we're in because like right now I get it. It is other channels that I think are more effective are more regulated. However, if people ask me, are we going to, put any energy toward innovating that channel? I, I believe the answer is no. And why? It's because I'm building for five years, for 10 years, from 20 years from now, we are not trying to cash grab for the next six months. And so it's, it's not a bad thing, but like there are folks where, yeah, that's, that's the focus. That's the priority is, you know, take the opportunity right now. And I've been in seasons where maybe we felt like that. Maybe we've, you know, felt like that's, that's worthwhile, but I, I, I felt this dissonance for a while now where I would say, and I said it pre AI voice, that phone is becoming the modern day fact. So like go back to last year and I was saying phone as in like phone numbers, like phone calls is becoming like a modern day fact. And I tell businesses all the time, if, if you go to your website and all it says is like, give me a call to me, that's all, that's almost as bad as saying, send me a fax if you want me to become your customer. And so I've, I felt so bold about that to now create innovations in the marketing space around like, how can I better call people? It just, I had dissonance there. It felt like this doesn't align with what I believe to be true. And so I had to like step back, ask myself, is this worth putting time and energy into? For us, it's not. But that's not to say that there aren't people out there that are making headway, solving problems with it. It's just, an, it's a segment of, it's a segment of the population or of folks that I think will either, uh, that's just only going to diminish with time. Yeah, and I think I like that idea, the point, right? It really depends on what your horizon is, right? If you're looking at a five, 10 year horizon, it probably isn't your energy. If you're like, you look, I've got six months to, to do something with this particular niche. Well, then you might need to just go after every angle. So I think that that's a really good lens to look at that through is what is it that you're building? Yeah, so that's, that's it. I feel like a weight is off my shoulders. I feel like I've been uh, I've been carrying this. Like I didn't want to confess it, um, but to folks that are curious, I don't anticipate investing anything into innovating voice in terms of phone, you know, phone calls. I actually think more interesting methods, which you will probably see us uh, do, is is there's a I call it asynchronous forms of communication. So this is where it's like video, voice notes. Those sort of things, uh, like think about that. If someone texted you a voice note, would you listen to that? I would be more likely to listen to the voice note than I would if you left me a voicemail. So a as I think about where we invest our time and energy and innovation resources into, I think about like, what are the things that would work for me? Because if it wouldn't work for me, it's, I got to know very clearly that I'm serving a very different population than myself, or I'm, I'm it's like a clue that I should do it differently. Like if it's not the way that I would want to be communicated with, why am I putting energy towards this? And this is also why we don't spend a lot of time, energy or innovation or even use this tactic ourselves of like cold email because I don't love cold email. So I like there's, there's just like each person has to find their own integrity of like what feels aligned and how you want to continue to grow your business or how you want to market. And for me, I like marketing in the ways that I would enjoy receiving on the other side. And, uh, like when I get nurtured and high value emails from people that I opted into, like, oh, I love that. 
when people cold email me, I'm like, I mean, sometimes I approach it like a student to be like, have you gotten better? But like 99% of them are just garbage. And so like, I, we don't use that even though it can work. And so in the same way as someone who never answers their phone and almost never even listens to their voicemail, I just can't, I can't, uh, justify innovating or investing in that. Makes sense. I would love to know 